Okay. Time to figure out what's on this thing. Inscription is a game that is full of mysteries and surprises. It is a game that is primarily created by Daniel Mullins. It began life at the Ludum Dare 48 hour game jam festival where the code, art and audio was all designed and created in a solo effort by Daniel. It was originally released on PC on October 19th, 2021 but has since been recently released on the PlayStation. It making its way to consoles inspired me to check it out and very quickly inspired this review. When you launch Inscription, you are greeted by a pretty standard main menu with a not so standard quirk. The option to actually start a new game is grayed out and the only way to begin playing is to continue a game that has already begun. This curious first interaction with Inscription serves two intertwined purposes. On one hand, it plants the seed of curiosity in your brain, a seed that will over time grow into a most useful ally. On the other hand though, it helps set up the game's cold open, showcasing Inscription's exceptional ability to provide interesting questions with even more interesting answers. As the game begins, you open your eyes and see that you are sitting at a table in a dark room. At least as much of a table as a small nearby lamp allows you to see, while darkness consumes everything else around you. As you sit there, you quickly realize you are not alone as a figure slowly creeps towards the small sanctuary the lamp's dim light provides. Coming just close enough to the light's edge to reveal only its eyes, However, as menacing as these eyes look, they only want to do one thing, to play a game of cards. Inscription is a lot of different things. It's a card game, a roguelike, an escape room, and a psychological horror experience. It's the convocation of ideas from the mind of Daniel Mullins, expertly conceived, crafted, and connected together to form an unforgettable experience. At the core of each of these ideas, though, is the card game, and what a card game it is. Inscription manages to find the perfect balance of borrowing tried and true mechanics from many card games that came before it, while also injecting a lot of its own flavor that helps it separate itself from the pack. The cards have familiar iconography that represent damage and health, and some cards even have familiar mechanics like flying and death touch, things that will be instantly recognizable to any card game veterans that jump in. But the game's resource system and how you play these cards, on the other hand, is actually quite unique. In order to play cards, you must sacrifice other cards, as denoted by each card's individual blood cost. The game gives you a deck of squirrel cards that you can draw from if you choose on top of your originally constructed deck. And these squirrels are specifically designed to be sacrificed, so they act as the game's mana in a way. When a card is killed, either by combat or sacrifice, their bones become a secondary resource which you can also use to summon even more cards. This loop of spawning, sacrificing, collecting bones, and then summoning more powerful cards is a loop that is simple on a surface level, but contains a lot of depth as well. Defeating enemy cards clears a path to your opponent and dealing damage directly to them will award you with teeth that are placed on the scale beside you. The scale will go back and forth as damage is dealt in each round and the first one to have five more teeth on their opponent's scale than they have on theirs is the winner. 
This foregoing of a traditional health system that's found in most other card games allows for some pretty wild swings. Knowing when to keep small creatures on the board to defend and when to sacrifice them for bigger ones becomes an agonizing decision as one mistake is all it takes to end a run. I say end a run because this is no ordinary card game. Just like the creepy set of what seem to be floating eyes is not just your opponent. The entity sitting across from you will also act as your dungeon master of sorts, as in between card matches they will place a map in front of you allowing you to choose different nodes to travel towards and as you continue on this odyssey the figure will narrate each and every step you take. These maps are where the roguelite elements come in, as they are littered with icons that represent different events that will take place upon your arrival. Some icons represent different battle opportunities and challenges, while other icons give you an opportunity to build, thin, or otherwise enhance your deck in various different ways. Getting to know the game's various cards and the ways you can manipulate them invokes a similarly satisfying sense of mastery that fellow titans of the roguelite genre provide. Inscription's card system at its core is quite balanced, however, these stops along the map give you ample opportunity and freedom to break that balance and create some truly broken and overpowered cards. This is by design though, as the shackles of balance are not really needed much when the entirety of this game is a PvE experience. Discovering ways to break the game is part of your quest to mastery, and as the game goes on, will become more important than you could ever begin to imagine. You are also given a backpack with useful items to be used when all else fails in battle, helping to tilt the scales in your favor, including an emergency squirrel card in a jar uh, to get something on the board in a hurry, or even a set of pliers to rip out one of your own teeth and place it on the scale, whatever it takes to give you an edge. As you travel through each of these maps, the path will eventually end at a boss encounter. During these encounters, the figure across from you will don a mask and change personas to fully embody these boss characters. Not only are these encounters significantly more tense from an audio-visual perspective, but they offer some of the most satisfying mechanics in the game. However, those mechanics also provide the game's greatest challenge, and if that challenge proves to be too much for the deck you've constructed, well then it's back to square one. Upon death, you will wake up in a dark room with enough light to see the figure from the table, or at least its eyes, creeping in the doorway. They will explain to you that while death is not the end, this is a roguelite after all, they would like to keep a keepsake to remember your last journey. This sequence is the introduction of the death card mechanic in Inscription, where you will use the cards that you've collected during your run, including any buffs you may have given them, to construct your own custom card, choosing cards from your past deck to make up the new card's cost, power, defense, and effects, you then name the card and the figure on the door will use a strange camera to take your picture for the card art. As you continue to try, fail, try again, and fail again, you will construct a death card every time. These cards can be acquired in future runs at many of the stops on the map, so they give you that little bit of an edge with each consecutive run. They also give you a bit of a feeling of presence in the game as each time you draw one of these cards, it serves as a reminder of past attempts. Death cards are not the only way to give yourself an advantage in Inscription though, as there is another feature in this game that really, really sets it apart from every other card game that I've ever played, and that's the ability to simply stand up from the table.
anytime you're looking at the map and trying to choose a destination to go to, you have the option to get up out of your chair and walk around. While doing this, you'll notice that you are locked in a cabin of sorts. Even though you are in a somewhat small place, there are a lot of things to look at. Everything here is meticulously placed and has some kind of meaning even if that meaning is not immediately obvious to you. And that's because, as you'll quickly realize, you are, in fact, inside of an escape room. Solving puzzles in the cabin will unlock new tools and cards to help you the next time you sit down to play, including mysterious talking cards who seem to know more than they let on. It's also during this time, away from the table, that a lot of the game's story will slowly start to unfold and bring to light a possible way to escape this card game's infinite loop. The atmosphere here is incredible and it's brought to even greater heights by the fact that no matter how hard you try to look at the figure sitting at the table, you will only ever see their eyes as they closely follow your every step around the cabin. As soon as the game begins, the feeling of being trapped starts to sink in and there is no better way to enhance that feeling than to give you just a little bit of a leash, as being able to move closer to an unreachable freedom can oftentimes make that freedom feel even further away, a concept in which this exploration mode implements flawlessly. While Inscription will never win an award for its pixel count or lifelike visuals, it has its own unique art style that it implements exceptionally well. The grim cabin atmosphere is consistently eerie and unsettling thanks to its dim lighting, overall ambiance, and the ever-present set of eyes watching your every move. The art style translates into the cards as well, as the thick lines and imperfections found on each card's drawing and construction strikes a resemblance of the sketches you'd find in a creepy ancient folktale book. On top of this, you have a fantastic soundtrack that smart use of bass and melodic humming never lets you shake that eerie feeling of the game's visuals. While the game features nearly no voice acting, the subtle animations of the characters and their audio cues while speaking fit wonderfully with the atmosphere the game is trying to build. Overall, it is a fully encompassed, eerie, creepy, wonderful feeling. Inscription is a game that is full of mysteries and surprises, and so is this review in fact. One surprise I will share with you now is that while everything I've explained thus far about Inscription is entirely true, the entire experience that I described is but only the game's opening act. You see, Inscription is as much a game about playing cards in an attempt to escape a creepy cabin as The Matrix is a film about Thomas Anderson, IT professional by day and computer hacker by night. This game has layers that I won't go into in this review because the moment you get to peek behind the curtain deserves to be experienced firsthand. It's an experience that I didn't see coming and will likely never forget. It's an experience that I would encourage anyone with even the slightest interest in card games to see for themselves. Indie games are the birthplace of innovation in today's gaming landscape, and it's because of that that we often judge them on the sum of their parts. We ignore some of the stumblings to find their greatness within the bigger picture. Sometimes, though, that greatness becomes bigger than the picture. And with that, you are left with a masterpiece. With that, you are left with inscription.